Why do you what is wrong with yourself? You should just go. go. Nobody wants you. Just nobody cares. Nobody so cares. Nobody so cares. Nobody 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 Constant chatter, constant comparison, constant fear. 14 seconds. Some of us, we live this reality 24-7, seven days a week. And all you heard was 14 seconds. This is what I call a mind monster. Your mind is a monster. Your mind is Goliath. And in this episode, I'm going to teach you how to win the battle of the mind. You spend more time in your mind than you do in this world. So let's learn to make it a happy place so that you may thrive. Instead of fighting against yourself, you will learn to fight for yourself. The Bible says, guard your heart because out of it flows the issues of life. So how do you guard your heart? By protecting your mind. And how do you protect your mind? By guarding your ears and eyes. Why? Because what goes in must come out. The Bible says in Matthew 15, 11, it is not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. Later in the verse 17 through 20, it continues to say, anything you eat passes through the stomach, then goes into the sewer. But the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. For from the heart come evil thoughts Murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. These are what defile you. Eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. Which again, I say to you superstars, guard your heart by protecting your mind. Your thoughts come from somewhere. You think what you're doing is okay because you have seen it, watched it, heard it, experienced it before. When you see something over and over and over and you're constantly exposed to it, you're thinking that it's okay. The enemy is presenting his kingdom to you in the form of entertainment and he is pushing it through media and he is calling it culture. The enemy is constantly exposing you to his kingdom and he is desensitizing you to it. This world is programming you so that you can model the enemy's kingdom. Everything is designed to kill you. Superstars, you need to treat life like you are a soldier in a battle because you are. The Bible says in Ephesians 6, 13 through 18, therefore put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will still be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all of these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on the salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times and on every occasion. Stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. Put on the full armor of God. I don't know about you, But the only person who wears armor are people in battles. This life is a battle. 
there is a spiritual battle taking place. And just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it's not happening. So armor up. You need to treat life like you are a soldier in a battle because you are. I want you guys to see how it says, put on every piece of armor to be able to resist the enemy and the time of evil. This lets me know two things. One, the time of evil is going to come. It's a guarantee. So you need to armor up. And two, put on every piece. That means you're wearing your shoes, your breastplate, your helmet, your sword, your belt, all of it, all of it. Why? Why does every piece of you need to be covered? Because if you have on shoes, but no helmet, your head is vulnerable. And if you have a sword, but no breastplate, your chest is vulnerable. You don't want to be vulnerable for attack. Every piece of armor is essential and vital to properly resist the enemy. So put on every piece of armor. So when it comes to protecting your mind, you have to protect your ears and your eyes. The enemy is always looking for ways to get access to your mind. So protect every area. Don't say, okay, I'm not going to watch anything bad. But then you allow yourself to be exposed to certain music, conversations, books, social sites, etc. You must protect both. Protect every area to properly resist the enemy. You need to be a guard over anything and everything that can translate information to your soul. The chaos in your life, you need to ask God to show you where you have opened that door. What area did I not properly protect? Any area in your life that doesn't model God, you have to surrender it. And how do you surrender? Invite God in. Say to him, God, show me how to live my life in this area. For example, God, show me what shows to watch, what books to read, what music to listen to, who to date, what friends and social circles I should be in, what I should spend my money on, how should I dress, what should I be focused on or seeking after, Whatever it is, invite God in, big or small. If you care about it, pray about it. Nothing is too big and nothing is too small. The one who controls the mind have mastery over the soul. The enemy is always looking for ways to get access to your mind. Whatever or whoever has control of your mind has control of your life. The most miserable place to be trapped is inside of yourself, inside of your selfishness. Selfish is putting yourself first. Selfless is putting yourself less. The root of evil is selfishness, putting yourself first. That is the enemy's entire kingdom. It's self-worship. What feels good and whatever promotes self. Self-ish, putting yourself first. Selfless, putting yourself less. And God's kingdom, he calls you to be humble which calls you to be selfless, thinking of yourself less. How you think will determine how you live and how you act. Whatever you are exposed to shapes the way that you think, 
which ultimately shapes the way that you live. For example, let's say you have a dog, but you don't take care of this dog. The dog is malnourished, it poops and pees everywhere, it barks, it cries, it bites people. Do you blame the dog or do you blame the owner? The owner, right? Because it is not properly cared for. When something misbehaves or doesn't grow, you don't blame the thing, you blame the environment. Because if you take that same dog But now you give it an attentive owner who feeds it, potty trains it, walks it, bathes it, plays with it. The same dog is now thriving. Why? Because the environment is healthier. This is what happens with your mind. If you allow yourself to be exposed to music that talks about sex, and you watch shows with really intense sex scenes, and then you go on Instagram and you see women shaking their bottoms, what's going to happen is that you're going to become desensitized and you're going to think that this is normal. And when you watch a lot of fighting videos and you see shows of people fighting and you hear a lot of cursing and then you listen to music with a lot of violence, you will begin to believe that this behavior is normal. So then that's your environment. You think sex isn't a big deal and you have the mouth of a sailor. Don't be the person who makes excuses for their limitations. The person who says, that's just the way I am. No, it's not. Because if you take that same person and you expose them to life-giving shows, life-giving music, a positive uplifting timeline and a for you page on social media, you expose them to church and a God-fearing friend group, what's going to happen? What's going to happen is that you're going to see God and reflect God and you are going to become the light that God called you to be. Don't sit there making excuses for the behavior coming out of you when you aren't trying to fix the environment that produced that behavior in the first place. You aren't trying to access the grace that God so freely gives you to help you rise out of your limitations. Don't sit there blaming yourself for not being able to grow in an unhealthy environment. If you want to grow, change the environment. You can have a mind monster like you heard in the beginning, or you can have a mental cheerleader. How do you create a mental cheerleader? You fill it with the right things. Give it the proper environment. Romans 12.2 states, don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Mind monster or mental cheerleader? The choice is yours. You have the power. You control what environment you are in. Why would you love something that hates you? Sit down and really ask yourself, when did you become anti-you? You are taking ownership of this identity. You are calling it my anxiety, my depression, my fear, my, my, my. But the last time I checked, the God of the universe who created you, in 2 Timothy 1.7, it states, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, of timidity, but he gave us a spirit of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Mind monster or mental cheerleader? The choice is yours, superstar. 
Talk to yourself with love. Be kind. Be patient with yourself. Divorce yourself from the opinions of others and what other people think about you or what other people say about you. Earlier, I said, if you want to grow, change the environment. Well, every accomplishment starts with the decision to try. So just do one thing, one thing at a time. Don't go cold turkey trying to change everything. That is the quickest way to fail. No one just walks into the gym on the first day and starts bench pressing 300 pounds. They start small. They get stronger over time. Start with replacing five minutes, just five minutes of how you start your day. Start the first part of your day by telling yourself, reminding yourself who you are. Center yourself because the rest of your day is going to be people and things that is going to try to tell you who you are and what you need and who you should be. Spend the first five minutes praising God thanking him for waking you up and that you have air in your lungs. If you have followed me for a long time, you know that I always say, you are alive, you are blessed, you are loved, and you are worthy. You are so worthy. Why? Because that's how I started my day. Those were my biggest mind monsters you are alive for a long time i didn't think i deserved to be alive my mother did not want me i was her fifth child she wanted to abort me and she tried and she constantly reminded me of it so i am blessed to be here which is the next one you are blessed because I almost didn't make it. But God, God had a plan for me. He chose me. Because of that constant reminder and the way that I was raised, I didn't feel loved, which is the next one. You are loved. So I made sure to remind myself that someone does love me and care for me which led me to my last one. I didn't feel worthy of any good thing. I only believed I deserved everything bad that happened to me. So I tell myself, you are worthy because I am. I'm worthy of life. I'm worthy of love. I'm worthy of being blessed. I'm worthy of being here. And I reiterate it. Because how many of you know we are so quickly to forget? So I say you are so worthy. You are so worthy. I started saying this back in 2018 and still in 2024. These very words hold so much weight. By me sharing what has helped me I have seen it transform so many of you. I don't say this to memorize and adopt what helped me. No, I want you guys to find what works for you. What are your biggest mind monsters? Start your day by speaking life over them. Change your mental environment. Nurture it with the word of God. I want you to learn to be still. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Learn to be still. Create opportunities for stillness. 
in this world that is so noisy, learn to be still. There's a passage in the Bible where Moses is leading the Egyptians out of the wilderness and there's something between them and their um and the land that's promised and it's the Red Sea. So then there is the Egyptians that are behind them and it is their promised land. And Moses says, be still and see the salvation of the Lord. For the enemy you see today, you will see no more. And so I say this to encourage you superstars, that if your mind sounds like anything that was in the beginning of this episode and you have the Egyptians behind you, you have that mind monster behind you and you're listening to this podcast hoping to create a mental cheerleader that is in front of you, but then there's something called the Red Sea. There's your doubts, there's your fears. What if this doesn't work? Be still and know that he is God. He's not going to leave you there. He promised you a sound mind. That is the spirit he gave you. Be still and know. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and everything else will be added onto you. Don't just put God first in your words. Don't just say it. Oh, yeah, God's first in my life. Yeah, God first, God first. I put God first. No. Put action behind it. Put God first in your ways. Your time, your talent, your treasures, the first part of your day. Put God first in those areas. Don't just say God is first in your life, but then when people look at you, they can't see it. Don't just say it, be it, be about it. What goes in must come out. So if you really put God first, it will naturally radiate out of you. Mind monster or mental cheerleader. Guard your heart, protect your mind, put on every piece of armor renew your thoughts Joshua 1 7 says be strong and courageous be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you do not deviate from them turning either to the right or to the left then you will be successful in everything you do Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Philippians 4.4 4 says, Always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon. Do not worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, right, and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about these things, things that are excellent and worthy of praise. 
Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me. Everything you heard me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. That is not me, superstars. That is Bible. That is scripture. Read the Bible, superstars. There's so much life in the Bible. Renew your mind in the Lord. Many times people get confused and they say things like, I need to find myself. I need to do some soul searching. No, you need to find God. Because when you find God, you will find yourself. Because you were made from God. So when you find God, he will teach you about love. He will show you love. He will give you love. And he will teach you how to love yourself and how to love others. Don't go looking for yourself. Look for God. When you find God, you will find yourself. Because if you go looking for yourself, you will run into a lot of ungodly things and you will get lost. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God. The Bible never told you to go find yourself and go do some soul searching. No, it says, seek first the kingdom of God and all else will be added to you. I want to close with this. Ezekiel chapter 33, one. Once again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, give your people this message. When I bring an army against the country, the people of that land chose one of their own to be a watchman. When the watchman sees the enemy coming, he sounds the alarm to warn the people. If those who heard the alarm refuse to take action, it is their own fault if they die. They heard the alarm, but ignored it. So the responsibility is theirs. If they had listened to the warning, they could have saved their lives. But if the watchman sees the enemy coming and doesn't sound the alarm to warn the people, he is responsible for their captivity. They will die in their sins, but I will hold the watchman responsible for their deaths. Now, son of man, I am making you a watchman for the people of Israel. Therefore, listen to what I say and warn them for me. If I announce that some wicked people are sure to die and you fail to tell them to change their ways, then they will die in their sins and I will hold you responsible for their deaths. But if you warn them to repent and they don't repent, they will die in their sins, but you will have saved yourself. Superstars, God calls us to be watchmen of his people. He told his disciples, bring me my sheep. God wants you to bring people into his kingdom. So share what you know. Warn others. 2 Timothy 1.8 says, never be ashamed to tell others about the Lord. Later on, it says, with the strength that God gives you, be ready to suffer with me for the sake of the good news. People may never step into a church. They may never pick up the Bible and read it. They may never even listen to this podcast episodes, but you did. Share your story. Share your testimony to help another person. Bring people into his kingdom. You have been called. You have been made a watchman. I have turned my mind monster into a mental cheerleader. And now I have given you the tools for you to do the same. And now it is your turn to go help someone. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for your truth. Thank you so much for your word. 
Lord, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice to first seek you and allow them to draw near to you because if they draw near to you, you will draw near to them. Help them see you, God. Help them experience you because when they find you, they will find themselves. Lord, help them put on your full armor so that they may defeat the Goliath that is their mind. Lord, we are in this world where people are desperately seeking every avenue to find peace, mental peace. I pray that they get to know you so that they may get to know that you give a peace that this world cannot give. You give a peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, you are the prince of peace. The mind monster that has been oppressing them, Lord, I pray that you would break the chains of their unhealthy thoughts and that you would uproot them from their unhealthy environments and help them create a mental cheerleader. Help them renew their minds, Lord. I pray that you give them eyes to see and ears to hear how you hear and the mind that allows them the wisdom they need to overcome. Lord, be the lamp upon their feet that leads them through the narrow gate into your everlasting kingdom. It is in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Well, superstars, that's the end of today's episode. I hope this message left you educated, motivated, and inspired to take your next steps. Always remember, you are alive, you are blessed, you are loved, and... You are worthy. You are so worthy. Until next time.